Is this a great day? Well, thank you. Thank you. Please be seated. They didn't even say that in my remarks, but I knew to do it. Um, it's a great day. <laughs> thank you, President Biden, for inviting us to the White House. Thank you, Speaker Pelosi and Secretary Raimondo. And thanks to all my great Senate colleagues who are here today as well. Well, what a six weeks it has been for the Senate. The incredible Inflation Reduction Act, the PACT Act, gun reform, NATO, and one of the most important things that we have done for America in years, if not decades, chips and science. For the last century, American prosperity was anchored on our unmatched commitment to scientific research and innovation. The question facing America today is whether that prosperity will live on in the century to come. Today, by enacting the Chips and Science Act, the largest investment in manufacturing, science, and innovation in decades, we say that America's best years still lie ahead. All too often, government and businesses are accused of thinking too short-term. But this is one of the most significant long-term thinking bills in ages. I firmly believe our grandchildren will work in jobs we can't even envision now because of these great investments. And to the innovators, <laughs> job creators, and workers who have witnessed the slow erosion of America's semiconductor industry, we will bring these jobs back to our shores and end our dependence on foreign chips. All right. The chips that make everything, from cars to household appliances to medical devices, that now are making them more expensive, and when we bring them back, the prices will go down. Very important to our, our people. The microchip is an American original. We used to lead the world in this technology, and it's time that we lead the way once again. We've also made the largest down payment in scientific research in decades, the kind we'd seen after World War II, that unleashed half a century of prosperity. We'll cultivate the tech hubs of tomorrow to spur new innovations and new discoveries to create countless new jobs right here at home. It's a game changer for so many places in America and for states like mine. Places like Albany and Syracuse and Rochester and Buffalo, where Mr. Aviv is from, you'll hear from him in Long Island, have long had the workforce, long had the ingenuity, long had the shovel-ready sites. But with the Chips and Science Act, we can finally have the jobs, too. And that's true for all of America, as well as New York. It's been a remarkable time for the Senate these last six weeks. It started last year, of course, when we passed the first infrastructure law in years. And in the last six weeks alone, we passed not only chips and science, but also veterans health care, gun safety, NATO, and now the Inflation Reduction Act has passed the Senate. The groundbreaking IRA bill, one of the most significant pieces of legislation in decades, will fight inflation, lower prescription drug and energy costs for the average American, create millions of good-paying union jobs, and it's the most significant bill fighting climate change we have ever, ever passed. <laughs> I salute my entire Democratic caucus, all 50 with differing views, for coming together and uniting behind this groundbreaking piece of legislation. These bills are what progress looks like. Don't tell me things can't change. 
And I want to thank to everyone who made signing of the CHIPS bill possible. Our amazing chair of this conference committee, Senator Maria Cantwell of Washington State. <laughs> Senators Cardin and Coons and Lujan and Portman and Van Hollen and Kelly and Cinema and Cornyn and Warner and White House and so many others. And thank you also to Senator Young, my partner in this bipartisan act. He and I worked on this bill, originally called the Endless Frontier Bill. I still love that name, but it's gone. Anyway, he and I worked on this bill for more than three long years. I was on my bike one morning in the Senate gym, and I told Todd I believed America had to invest in science and research, and I was passionate about this issue. He was passionate to, as well, and we got to work on the Endless Frontier Act, which became the blueprint for the Chips and Science Act. I've always said that Democrats would be ready to work with Republicans when possible. And at today's signing, we, we celebrate such an accomplishment. And I want to give a special shout out to my staff. They are amazing, hardworking, and brilliant, and I couldn't have done it without them. Where are you? Raise your hands, folks, so I can see you. They're all scattered throughout. There they are. And finally, last but certainly not least, I want to thank our great president for his leadership. All of these things that we have done, every single one of them wouldn't have been possible without his steadfast, dedicated leadership and vision. Thank you, Mr. President. In closing, let me say this. For decades, it was America's fierce commitment to science, research, innovation, and advanced manufacturing that made us the envy of the world. Today, we face the great task of preserving that legacy in this century, in a world of fierce competition and hungry authoritarians both abroad and now even at home. Authoritarians are cheering for us to lose, hoping we sit on our hands and fail to adapt to the 21st century. We dare not cede the mantle of global leadership in this century. No, we mean for America to lead this country just as we always have. We will show that democracy will always be the best system to govern in a tumultuous world. It certainly won't happen on its own, but today we are laying the foundation for a bold, bold future. Today, by enacting the Chips and Science Act, we are making clear, we believe, another great American century lies on the horizon. Thank you. Right. Now our great speaker, our partner, who all of these bills we've mentioned have been worked through the Senate, and everyone but one has been worked through the House, and that will be worked on this week. We have a great team, a great partnership, and the House has a great leader, Speaker Nancy Pelosi. Yeah. I think I have the president's speech here. <laughs> well, do with yours. I don't know what they did with it, but I can do without it. <laughs> Thank you. That's <laughs> helpful. Mr. President. <laughs> Today, Mr. President, with a stroke of your pen, America declares our economic independence, we strengthen our national security, and we enhance our family's financial future. Mr. President, thank you for your visionary, inspiring leadership that leaves, brings us together today to ensure that America is better equipped than ever before to compete for and win the 21st century. I thank 
<laughs> I thank Secretary Raimondo uh, for your brilliant persistence in advancing this legislation. Thank you, Secretary Raimondo. <laughs> that the Chips and Science Act passed with bipartisan support is a tribute to Leader Schumer. Thank you, Leader Schumer, his colleagues in the Senate, as he indicated, and our colleagues in the House of Representatives, whom I wish to thank. But let's thank the Senate once again. Thank you, Chuck Schumer. And thank you for getting us off to a wonderful start this week again with the inflation legislation. Let us thank our many committee chairs and, and the committee members. I want to acknowledge Eddie Bernice Johnson, <laughs> Frank Pallone, Richie Neal, Greg Meeks, Bobby Scott, other chairs and, vice and subcommittee chairs, and all of our members. And I join the leader, and he knows how, how actually inspired our staff was in their work, in their, in their stamina, in their brilliance. And I wish to join in thanking our staff on the House side as well. Thank you to the staff. Thanks to everyone's leadership, we secured the tools the administration needs to identify, develop, and recruit our nation's best minds, building an inclusive STEM workforce and fostering innovation in every corner of America. Mr. President, this honors your commitment to inclusion and diversity and fairness. It delivers game-changing investments to drive decades of discovery, especially at the National Science Foundation. Indeed, the new Directorate of Technology, Innovation, and Partnerships will harness new knowledge and innovation to help solve our biggest challenges, including the climate crisis and inequality in our economy. We all fought for strong guardrails for the CHIPS funding to keep the benefits on our shores and prevent profiteering. This is a bill about make it in America. Uh, make it in America, as Sandy Hoyer would say. Let us thank the countless advocates, like Joshua Aviv, who is here, who proved that outside mobilization can spark change. We thank the many accomplished scientists and students from around the country who work closely with Chair Eddie Bernice Johnson. And we thank the partners in the private sector who are essential to our economic success, many of whom are here today. Indeed, because of the remarkable accomplishments of everyone here, the CHIPS and Science Act is an historic achievement, lowering kitchen table cost and creating good paying <coughs> jobs for America's families. That's our first responsibility domestically. Returning American semiconductor production to world leadership status and unleashing America's science and technology to maintain our leadership for the future. For generations, America has been the beacon of excellence to the world in science, innovation, and engineering. Our research has generated groundbreaking discoveries our industry has powered unprecedented prosperity. Our technology has altered the course of history. And our workforce, our workforce has been the envy of the world. And we thank our friends in labor who are here today for being the envy of the world. This legislation is keep in keeping with this all-American tradition ensuring that our nation can outcompete any nation in the world. <laughs> Under President Biden, our beacon of excellence will glow for generations to come. Thank you, Mr. President. <laughs> and thank you all. God bless America. He truly has done so with the leadership that has made all this great legislation possible under the leadership of President Biden. I so said, thank you all. I'm very, very proud. This is an exciting day. We talked about it all over the country, all over the world. People are just in awe of the accomplishment that this is. 
because it's about science, 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 and science. Jobs, 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 healthcare, and they're all that science leads to. Science is an answer to our prayers. Chips and science are doubly an answer to our prayers. And with that, I have the very big honor of introducing the Secretary of Commerce. As I said, her persistent brilliance was so instrumental in bringing people together in making essential priorities and understanding what we had to do in such a special way. And of course, I take great pride in her being an Italian-American Secretary <laughs> of Commerce. <laughs> Secretary Momondo. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you, thank you. Please, another round of applause for our amazing speaker. I'm going to go off script for a second to give you a window into the character that is President Joe Biden otherwise also my boss. He just kind, he's here, it's 90 degrees, and he just whispered to me, do you want me to pull the step out so you can have some height? The President of the United States is worried about my height at this podium. That is the humility and kindness of our leader. He's a very, very, very special man and a special leader, and we all know that. Uh, so, good morning, and congratulations to everyone who is here. This is an incredible, incredible day. And I, I want to say again, we would not be here but for the leadership of President Joe Biden. So, thank you. Anyone who has been involved in this bill, any bill, any of the bills that are happening, know that there were ups and downs, and it was a long path to get here. And. The President said, don't give up. Don't give up. Keep going. Find another way. And because of your leadership and persistence, we are here today. So on behalf of a grateful America, thank you, President, for your leadership. <laughs> to Speaker Pelosi, thank you. Uh, it is true we share a bond as small Italian women in public service. Um, but like chips. Small but mighty is <laughs> Speaker Pelosi. Uh, I want to thank you for your friendship in this, your mentorship, but most of all, your persistence and your commitment. It wasn't easy, and you did it. And all of your team who are here, thank you to each and every one of you. And, and to Leader Schumer, he gives relentless a new name, a new definition. <laughs> Relentless in all the best ways. And there were times when we thought, could, we, could this happen? Would it be bipartisan? Always, Leader Schumer said, yes, I will not give up, I will not give up, I will not give up. So thank you so much for your commitment and your leadership. And to your chairs, thank you, Chair Cantwell, thank you. Uh, and to the Republicans um, in the House and the Senate, this is bipartisan. The President and the Speaker and the Leader insisted it would be bipartisan, and we are showing the world that America can get things done in a bipartisan way when it matters. So thank you to your leadership. I also have to say thank you to a group that rarely gets a thank you, which is the White House staff, the unsung heroes. These guys work day and night, seven days a week starting with Ron Klain and Steve Reschetti and Louisa Terrell uh, and Brian Deese. Thank you guys for being there and for making this happen. Thank you. And to the staff of the Commerce Department, thanks for putting up with me and teaching me the ropes. Um, so listen, this couldn't have come at a more urgent moment. Could not have come at a more, ur more urgent moment. As has been said, semiconductors power everything, everything in our economy. And thank you to the private sector partners who are here today. They're the linchpin of our economic and our national security. And our over-reliance on foreign manufacturers is a real vulnerability. But as has been said, that's going to change. 
That is going to change. With these investments, that changes. That changes right now. We're going to construct an entire semiconductor ecosystem right here in the United States of America. That means creating hundreds of thousands of high quality, high paying manufacturing jobs in the United States of America. It means unleashing the next generation of American innovation. It means building more secure supply chains and protecting Americans' global leadership and values for decades and generations to come. And we're going to ensure when we're creating these jobs, all Americans have a shot at getting these jobs. All Americans. And that comes straight from the top. So thank you again, President Biden, for your leadership. Thank you to the bipartisan work in Congress. Together, we are strengthening our leadership and our ability to innovate and out-innovate and compete for generations to come. It's my great pleasure to introduce our next speaker, who is an innovator, a young, dynamic, amazing American innovator, inventor, and entrepreneur. Josh Aviv is the CEO and co-founder of Spark Charge an EV charging system and network that brings the charging directly to the drivers. As a member of the next generation of American innovators, he knows firsthand how vital it is to support high-tech manufacturing right here in the United States of America. Please join me in welcoming Joshua Aviv. All right. Well, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Um, good morning. Good morning. Uh, it is probably 120 degrees on stage and probably 95 where you guys are at. So I'm going to make it quick because we're the last ones up here. <laughs> so my name is Josh Aviv. I was born here in DC. So being part of this ceremony, yeah, yeah. <laughs> being part of this ceremony feels like a homecoming to me. My grandfather was the first entrepreneur that I ever met. He ran a freight logistics company for over 20 years, shuttling airplane parts between Dulles and National Airport. Funny story, I would used to try and call out sick so I could ride with him, because for lunch he would always give me a Snickers bar, and it was always the king size. <laughs> he instilled in me a drive and work ethic that led me to launch my own company in 2017. It's called Spark Charge, and we've created the world's first mobile and ultra-fast electric vehicle charger in the world. I Thank you. I started as a single founder. It was tough, but I believed in the power of my product, and I believed in the American dream. Over the last few years, Spark Charge has grown to over 50 employees nationwide with operations across the United States and customers around the world. Thank you. We also launched the first EV charging app called Currently. Just like Rideshare that picks you up wherever you need, you're, if you're driving an electric vehicle and need a charge, we can deliver that charge directly to your vehicle anytime and anywhere you want. A truly breakthrough innovation in EV charging. For years, my industry has been at the mercy of supply chains, making semiconductors that are critical to our chargers. And I wanted to change that. That's why, from day one, every single product that we've manufactured has been manufactured right here in the United States at our factory in Buffalo, New York. <laughs> and not only that, but we are also planning to double the size of that factory over the next few months. As a business owner, I want to give my fellow Americans more than just a job. I want to give them an opportunity to lead our economy's transition to a clean, electrified, a clean electrified transportation. Because of me, that is what America is all about. It's a country where innovation thrives. With the most capable and creative workforce on Earth, anyone with an idea can make it a reality. This new, chips, chips, this new law, the Chips and Science Act, gives people like me a chance the opportunity to build and grow our businesses and be proud of what we do, to be proud of our country. I'm honored to introduce a president who understands that. Mr. President, from one proud Syracuse Univers University alumnus to another, thank you for your leadership. 
Thank you, brother. And, and one last thing, if you ever need a charge for your electric Corvette one day, I got your back. <laughs> Please join me in welcoming President Joe Biden. Thank you, brother. Well, I'll tell you what, Detroit's making some really hot vehicles. <laughs> they even got a Hummer that can go 4-1, 0 to 60. That's faster than my Corvette. Now, my Corvette's older than I am, almost. But uh, what I realize is that uh, my Corvette's now a hell, worth a hell of a lot more than when I bought it. I got it original, 5700 bucks. They tell me it's worth a lot of money. But I know if I ever sell a bowl, come down from heaven and smite me down. But at any rate. And by the way, that new Corvette, that's electric Corvette, I, uh, I got a commitment that I don't think I'm going to be able to enforce, that I get to buy the first one, uh, because it's going to be out before I'm out of office. So, uh, but uh, at any rate. Look, uh, folks, um, Chuck, you've done a hell of a job. You really have. You really have. And Speaker Pelosi, you always get it done. You always get it done. Come hell or high water, you get it done. And uh, I want to thank Secretary Raimondo. And Josh, thank you for the introduction. Josh loves electric cars. He graduated from Syracuse. He's my kind of guy. What more do you need? Syracuse and electric cars. Look, this bill I'm about to sign in law, in my view, represents what I've always believed. America is the only nation in the world, and I believe this every fiber of my being, the only nation in the world that can be defined, as I've told Xi Jinping several years ago, by a single word. He asked me to define America for him when I was in China, and he and I were alone in the Tibetan Plateau. I said, I can do it in one word, and I mean it. Possibilities. In America, everything is possible. We believe every and anything is possible. It's part of the soul of this country. I mean, it really is. We can channel all our resources. Most of all, we can channel the full talents of all our people into a greater measure of hope and opportunity for our nation and for the world. To create good jobs, empower workers, grow the economy, not just for the wealthy, but grow for everyone. To change the course of human health and disease. To tackle climate crisis with innovation and jobs. To lead the world, not this is not hyperbole, lead the world and future industries and protect our national security. We've always gotten it. We haven't always gotten it right, but we've never walked away from that sense of possibility that drives this country. Never. Now, it matters today, I think, more than any in a very long, long time. You're tired of hearing me say this, those who work with me so closely, but that's because we face an inflection point in our nation and around the world. Fundamental change is taking place today politically, economically, and technologically. Change that can either strengthen our sense of control and security, of dignity and pride in our lives and our nation, or, or change that weakens us so that people are left behind, causing them to question whether or not the very institutions, our economy, our democracy itself, can still deliver for them, for everybody. This is the moment we face. I really mean this. I believe with every fiber of my being. We, all, we hear all the noise out there. <laughs> we know there are those who focus more on seeking power than securing the future, excuse me, <clears throat> than securing the future. Those who seek division instead of strength and unity, who tear down rather than build up. Today is a day for builders. Today, America is delivering, delivering. <laughs> And I, honest to God, believe that 50, 75, 100 years from now, <coughs> from people who will look back on this week, they'll know that we met this moment. Today, I'm signing the law of the Chips and Science Act, a once-in-a-generation investment in America itself, a law that the American people can be proud of. I called for elements of this law when I first came to office. I want to thank everyone, everyone here, who helped make it possible. 
Vice President Harris and the second gentleman, members of the Cabinet and the White House team, members of the United States Congress of both parties, the majority leader, Senators Cantwell, Young, Portman. I don't want to get you in trouble, but you did a hell of a job. <laughs> By the way, he's a good man. <laughs> That's a different story. He, I just probably cost him. I apologize. All kidding aside, thank you. Thank you, thank you. And along with Senators Cornyn and Wicker, help keep this bill on track beginning to end. In the House, I thank Pre uh, Speaker Pelosi and Steny Hoyer and Representative Eddie Bernice, God love you. You're sitting there. You're ready. You did it all. You moved. Frank Pallone. I keep reminding Frank he's in New Jersey, but Delaware owns the, to the high water mark on the shore of New Jersey. We had a court case about that. I just want you to know that. Mike McCall. Doris Matsui, and, uh, and the man who holds the seat I used to hold, Chris Coons. Look, so many other Democrats and Republicans alike are committed to getting this bill done. And while the bipartisanship in Congress is critical, I also want to acknowledge something else. Look at the people here today. You come from all different backgrounds to support this bill. Governors, like the governor of Illinois, who I see, legislators, mayors, state legislators, entrepreneurs, business people, labor, they're the reason why we're here. They're the reason why we got this far. Science, scientists, technologists, engineers, physicians, presidents of four-year and community colleges, both, civil rights leaders, national security leaders, government officials. I met with many of you through this process. So many of you have spent years and years calling for key investments that are made in this bill. For years, you've been calling for it. You helped make it happen. You represent why. We are better positioned than any, any other nation in the world to win the economic competition of the 21st century. <coughs> You're the reason why I'm so optimistic about the future of our country. You know, the Chips and Science Act supercharged our efforts to make semiconductors here in America. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Those tiny computer chips, smaller than a fingertip, that are the building blocks for our modern economy powering everything from smartphones to dishwashers, automobiles. In fact, there are as many as 3,000 semiconductors per vehicle made today, 3,000 per vehicle. America invented the semiconductors. They powered NASA's mission to the moon. <coughs> Federal research and development brought down the cost of making them and built a market in an entire industry. As a result, over 30 years ago, America had 40 percent of the global production of these chips. And then something happened. American manufacturing, the backbone of our economy, <coughs> was hollowed out. We let semiconductor manufacturing go overseas. And as a result, today, we barely produce 10 percent of the semiconductors, <coughs> excuse me, despite being the leader in chips design as well as research. And as we saw during the pandemic, when factories that make these chips shut down, the global economy comes to a screeching halt, driving up costs for families <laughs> and everyone, not just here, but around the world. One third of the core inflation last year was due to the higher price for automobiles, for automobiles <laughs> and a shortage of semiconductors. Folks, we need to make these chips here in America to bring down everyday costs and create jobs. Don't take my word for it. Listen to some of the business leaders here today and across the country. They're making decisions right now about where to invest and ramp up production for these semiconductors. Many are foreigners making investments, companies making, deciding where in the world to go. And they've chosen the <coughs> United States of America. They look at China, Japan, South Korea, the European Union, all making historic investments of billions of dollars to track the businesses to their countries to produce these chips. But these industry leaders also see America is back and leading the way. During my State of the Union, I described the field of dreams on 1,000 acres outside of Columbus, Ohio, where America's future will be built. Intel, whose CEO is here today, Pat Gelsinger, here today. He's going to break ground in the next generation semiconductor factories in central Ohio 
early this fall. American company Micron is announcing today that because of this law, it's going to invest $40 billion over 10 years to build factories and special chips called memory chips that store information on your smartphone. <coughs> investment. This investment alone is going to create 40,000 jobs. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm sorry. And increase market share in memory chips by 500 percent. Two more American companies. I want to take another sip of water. Two other companies, Global Foundries and Qualcomm, announced yesterday a $4 billion partnership to produce chips in the U.S. that would otherwise have gone overseas. <laughs> Qualcomm is one of the world's largest buyers of chips. It's planning to increase its chip production by up to 50 percent over the next five years. These companies see what I see, that the future of the chip industry is going to be made in America. <laughs> and for folks at home, there's a broader supply chain that makes these semiconductors that connect countless other small businesses and manufacturers. This law funds the entire summer, conductor, summer semiconductor supply chain for research and development to key inputs like polysilicon manufactured by a factory in Hemlock, New York. Nearly one-third of all the chips in the world use polysilicon made in Hemlock. Imagine if we had more of these kinds of factories across the country. This law will make that a reality. And there's analysis that says investment in the Chips and Science Act will create one million, more than one million construction jobs alone over the next six years, building semiconductor factories in America. America invented the semiconductor, as has been mentioned already. And this law brings it back home. It's in our economic interest and it's in our national security interest to do so. Earlier this year, I went down to Lockheed's factory in Alabama, where they're making the Javelin missiles that were supplying Ukraine to defend themselves against Putin's unprovoked war. And it's crystal clear we need these semiconductors, not only for those Javelin missiles, but also for weapon systems of the future that are going to be even more reliant on advanced chips. Unfortunately, we produce zero percent of these advanced chips now. And China is trying to move away ahead of us and manufacture these sophisticated chips as well. It's no wonder the Chinese Communist Party actively lobbied U.S. business against this bill. The United States must lead the world in the production of these advanced chips. This law will do exactly that. And to be clear, this law is not handing out blank checks to companies. Today, I'm ordering my administration to be laser-focused on the guardrails that will protect taxpayers' dollars. It means making sure that companies partner with community colleges and technical schools to offer training and apprenticeship programs and work with small and minority-owned businesses. They'll have the power — they'll have the power to take back any federal funding if companies don't meet these commitments required by the bill. This includes requirements that companies building these semiconductor facilities pay Davis-Baking prevailing wage <laughs> to ensure the tens of thousands of new construction jobs are union jobs. We'll not allow companies to use these funds to buy back stock or issue dividends. And finally, this bill is about more than chips. It's about science as well. Decades ago, we used to invest 2 percent of our GDP and led that led the world in everything. We led the world in everything from internet to the GPS. Today, we invest less than one percent. We used to rank number one in the world in research and development. Now we rank number nine. China was number eight decades ago. Now they are number two. And other countries are closing in fast. This law gets moving up once again. It authorizes funding to boost our research and development funding closer to 1 percent of the GDP, the fastest single-year percentage increase in 70 years. And it's going to make a difference. This increased research and development funding is going to ensure the United States leads the world in the industries of the future, from quantum computing to artificial intelligence to advanced biotechnology. 
kinds of investments that will deliver vaccines for cancer cures, for HIV, invent the next gen big things that is, hadn't even been imagined yet. The law that requirements that any company that receives federal research development will have to make that technology they're inventing here in America. That means we'll invest in America and invent in America and make it in America. We're going to make sure we include all of America. Supporting entrepreneurs and technological hubs across America, including historic black colleges and universities, minority-serving institutions, tribal colleges. We're going to tap into our greatest competitive advantage, our diverse and talented workforce, urban, rural, suburban, and tribal. And people like Josh came up with his idea for portable electric car chargers five years ago in Buffalo, New York. And all the young people out there today who have an idea that spark imagination to solve a problem they see, to cure a disease they have, to dream to make the impossible possible, this law is for them. Let me close with this. Last month, I awarded Steve Jobs Presidential Medal of Freedom posthumously. At every turn of his life, he dared to think differently, embodied that most of American questions. What next? The Chips and Science Act is going to inspire a whole new generation of Americans to answer that question. What next? Right now, as Bill can tell you, NASA has a mission going back to the moon, then to Mars, the sun, and beyond, capturing, capturing images of distant galaxies. We could only once dream existed, and we could never think we could see. The Chips and Science Act captures that magic <coughs> <laughs> here on Earth. It also builds on the progress we've made to rebuild America's with the historic infrastructure law that I signed last year that's going to modernize our roads, our bridges, and deliver clean water, high-speed internet for every American. <clears throat> it builds on another, one of my many top priorities, creation of an re advanced research projects agency in health, for health, ARPA-H. It's going to transform how we detect treat, cure diseases like Alzheimer's, diabetes, and cancer. And tomorrow, I'm signing the most significant law ever to help veterans suffering from exposure to toxins from burn pits. <laughs> and soon, I hope to be signing the Inflation Reduction Act into law that's going to lower the cost of health care and energy and make historic investments to tackle climate crisis. Once that law is signed, any senior, by the first of the year, no matter how high their — if they're on Medicare, no matter how high, no matter how high their drug bills are, will never have to pay more than $2,000 a year. Just one specific example, beginning in January. There's a lot going to happen. And for all the division in our country, we're showing ourselves in the world that we can take on the biggest challenges. We can take on the special interests and that democracy can deliver for the people of this country. That's why I'm confident that decades from now, people will look back at this week with all we've passed and all we've moved on, that we met the moment at this inflection point in history, a moment when we bet on ourselves, believed in ourselves, and recaptured the story, the spirit, and the soul of this nation. We are the United States of America, a singular place of possibilities. I'm not going to go sign the Ships and Science Act. And once again, I promise you, we're leading the world again for the next decades. Thank you. Ready? Got it? Yes. Oh, it's low. Oh. All right. 